Presence detection is fundamental to any smart home, whether your smart home has wheels or not. One of the primary benefits of a smart home is being able to automate things when nobody is home or when somebody is home. And in our van, we like to have things turn off, like the inverter, water pump, and lights when we leave, and have those things turn on under certain circumstances when we return home. There are a bunch of techniques to determine presence detection, but which one is better? If you're in a smart van or adventure mobile like us, then using solutions that do not rely on the internet is critical. So something like the Home Assistant native app is out. Wi-Fi is great for presence detection, and I made a video all about that right here. It doesn't require an internet connection, but it does require that you can access a list of the active clients on your Wi-Fi router. But what if you don't have a router that'll allow you to access a list of the currently active client names, or you want to track a device that doesn't have Wi-Fi? Well, there's another great method that doesn't lean on an internet connection, and that is Bluetooth. Almost all of us are carrying devices that have Bluetooth, like our phones and our watches or fitness trackers. But is Bluetooth really better? In this video, we're going to answer that question. And if you stick around to the last bite, I'll show you how we can combine Bluetooth and Wi-Fi together for the ultimate unbreakable presence detection in your mobile smart home. All right, let's get to work. Bluetooth presence requires two basic ingredients. First, you need a device with a Bluetooth radio that you want to track. And second, you need a device with a Bluetooth radio to do the tracking. The first part is easy. We can use the Bluetooth in your phone or your watch or your fitness tracker, or you can even get a low power Bluetooth key fob for your keychain. For the second part, we're going to use a software project called ES Presence. If you take a look at the logo, the ESP is capitalized, and that's a reference to the ESP microcontroller. You might be familiar with the ESP microcontrollers for projects like ESP Home or other custom home automation projects you've built. I've made a lot of videos using ESP microcontrollers for things like ESP Home, and I'll put some links to those down in the description. If you're not familiar with ESP devices, you're going to need an ESP32. I'm using this ESP32, and I'll leave a link in the description to some ESP32 devices you can buy. Just know that ESP8266 devices will not work with ES Presence. Before we dig in, let's take a super simplified look at how all of this works. Devices like your phone send out regular advertisement packets, and ESP Presence uses cheap ESP32 devices with Bluetooth to detect those signals and send that information over Wi-Fi to an MQTT server. And if you're using Home Assistant, we can import that information and use those sensors in automations. If you use multiple ESP32s with ES Presence installed, you can spread those around your house or around your vehicle, and ES Presence will use the signal strength from devices like your phone, your watch, or your fitness tracker to determine your relative distance to one of these devices. Then ES Presence can determine which room of the house or vehicle you're in. In the case of SmartyVan, we're only using one node and therefore one room, so I'm really just trying to detect if any of our devices are home or not. As I mentioned, ES Presence uses MQTT to deliver its messages. I'll be using the Mosquito Broker in Home Assistant installed as an add-on, but this isn't required. If you don't use Home Assistant and you use a different MQTT broker, that's just fine. I have a video that I'll link to down below that walks you through setting up Mosquito MQTT Broker in Home Assistant as an add-on. So you really only need two simple things to get started. You're going to need an ESP32 and maybe a 3D printed case to keep it safe. And you're going to need an MQTT broker. Like I mentioned, I'll be using the Mosquito broker running in Home Assistant as an add-on. And that's what I'll be using in our demo today. All right, let's dig in. ES Presence refers to each ESP device as a node. And to install the firmware on a node, we're going to navigate to ESPresence.com and click on Nodes and then Install Firmware. You need to be using a browser like Chrome or Microsoft Edge to install this directly from a browser. So I've connected my device to my computer with USB-C and I'll leave the flavor set to standard and the latest version of ES Presence. I'll click Connect and I'm going to choose that device that I connected to my laptop and click Connect. And then we're going to click Install ES Presence. I'll click Erase Device to make sure it's fully erased and install. While the ES Presence firmware is installing, I'll take this opportunity to say a quick thanks to all Smarty Van members, especially our top tier members. If you want to support the channel directly, click the join button down below and check out the perks that are available. Or just click the subscribe button. It's free and it really helps the channel. And if you're looking for a community to dig deeper on all things home automation, especially in a vehicle, check out the Discord server. It's linked down below as well. All right, looks like our firmware is installed. 
When the firmware install finishes, you may see a prompt to enter Wi-Fi credentials. You can enter those here, but I'm gonna click skip and connect to the device directly so we can do some more configuration before we move on. So I'll click skip and I'm gonna close that. Then I'm gonna connect to this device directly. It's currently broadcasting an SSID and I'm gonna look at my Wi-Fi menu here and look for something that begins with ES Presence. I'm gonna choose this ES Presence device right here and you should see a captive portal pop up. This is the web interface for the ES Presence. I'm just gonna do a couple configuration options here and then we'll connect to this device through our regular web browser. First, we can configure the Wi-Fi to connect to the same Wi-Fi network that our home assistant server is connected to. So in my case, I'm gonna choose VanLink and enter the password. And then we're gonna give our device a room name. In our case, we're just gonna call this van because we don't have multiple rooms, but you might name this something like kitchen or bathroom or bedroom. Then the last thing I'm gonna do here is add some MQTT credentials. This device wants to connect to the MQTT server and I need to add the server IP address here. If you're running the Mosquito MQTT broker on Home Assistant, you'll use the same IP address as your Home Assistant server. Otherwise, use the IP address of your MQTT broker. Most likely you're gonna leave the port as the default 1883 then we're gonna add the username and password credentials that are required to access our MQTT server. In my case, I've configured those on Home Assistant, and if you don't know how to do that, again, I'll leave a link down in the description. Once you've made these changes, we can click Save and click Send. Then we're gonna click Restart Device. This will disconnect us from the ESP device's access point, and now the device will connect to our Wi-Fi network in the van. Okay, let's do a quick recap. So far, we flashed ES Presence to an ESP32 device, and we've logged into that device to give it Wi-Fi credentials and MQTT broker credentials, and we've restarted the device. Now we can take a look at our MQTT broker and see if we have any information being published. So now I'm gonna head over to MQTT Explorer, which is my favorite app to browse and explore MQTT brokers. I'll create a new connection, give it a name, and we'll add the host. This is the IP address of your MQTT broker. In my case, this is running on Home Assistant, so I'll use my Home Assistant IP address. We'll leave the port 1883, and we'll add a username and password. This is the same username and password we configured on the ESP device, and this is set up in your MQTT broker. And then I'll click Connect. And there we see ES Presence Topics. And if I scroll down Devices, you'll see a list of a bunch of devices. These are all the Bluetooth devices that are sending out their Bluetooth signals in and around the van but we don't really know which devices these are. So we need to do something to make this a little more clear and identify a specific device that we want to track. To do that, we need to connect to the web interface of our ES Presence device. So I'm gonna to go to our Home Assistant install, click on Settings and Devices and Services, and you'll see that we have an MQTT device discovered. MQTT has auto discovery features in Home Assistant, and so this device was automatically discovered and added to our devices. And if I click the Visit button here, this will open up the IP address of our ES Presence device. If you aren't using Home Assistant, you could look at your router and discover the IP address of your ES Presence device and simply type that into your web browser. And here you'll see all the things we've already configured, like the room name and the MQTT credentials. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a button that says click here to edit other settings. And if you click there, this opens another web interface and you can see some more settings for ES Presence. All right, then I'll click Devices and then click Enroll. I'm going to select a phone because I'm enrolling my iPhone and I'll give it a name. I'm calling this Microphone Bluetooth. And then I'll click Enroll. And you'll see some instructions here, but to enroll your device, you need to navigate to Settings and then the Bluetooth settings and look for other devices down at the bottom. I'll click ES Presence and Pair. Great, and you can see in the web interface that this device has been enrolled. After this is done, you can click the I here on the iPhone and forget this device. We no longer need this pairing. All right, now we see our device is enrolled. Microphone Bluetooth is right here, and it's using an IRK. That's an identity resolving key, which is a security feature of Bluetooth. With this key, ES Presence can resolve the private address of your device and always keep track of Bluetooth. Now, if we switch back to our MQTT Explorer, you can see that phone colon microphone Bluetooth is listed amongst the devices, but we still see all those other random devices. So we can do one more thing to help clean this up. I'll go back to the ES Presence web interface and I'm gonna copy the alias of my phone and go to settings and then we'll scroll down to filtering. If I paste that ID here, this will include only sending these IDs to MQTT and I'll click save and restart. Then if we go over to the devices in MQTT Explorer, I can delete these. 
next time this is populated, you'll see that it's only populating my phone in the devices list, much cleaner, and it's really the only thing I want to keep track of with ES Presence. And if we scroll down this device, you'll see each node that this device is connected to. In my case, I only have one node, and that's VAN. And if I click on VAN, you can see a bunch of stats about this device, including the RSSI and the distance from this node. If you're using Home Assistant like us, next I'll show you how to create some useful sensors using this data. If you're using Home Assistant, let's set up some sensors to track individual devices. I'm using Studio Code Server, but you can use any text editor to add some configuration. I'm also using packages, which I made a video about right here, and that's how I keep projects like this organized. So I'll navigate to my presence folder and I'll click on presence.yaml. I've added a sensor to this configuration using the MQTT Room platform. We'll give it a name, microphone, Bluetooth, and the device ID. This is the same ID that we just set up in ES Presence and that we saw over in MQTT Explorer. The away timeout is simply how long to wait to consider this device away. The default is five and I've left it here at five. Then we need to configure the state topic. And if we switch back to MQTT Explorer and highlight our device, you can see the path here at the top. You can click this button to copy the path and you can paste that here. In my case, it's ES Presence, devices, phone colon, mic phone, Bluetooth. Then we'll give this sensor a unique ID. If this is the first time you're using the MQTT Room integration, then we need to switch over to the developer tools and click Restart, and we'll restart Home Assistant. Once Home Assistant has restarted, we can switch to the States tab in the developer tools and filter for the name of our device. And you can see the state of my device is VAN. This is the only room we set up. It's the only node we configured with ES Presence, and my phone is connected to the Bluetooth of that device. You can even see the distance in the attributes here. This is an estimate in meters based on the RSSI of the Bluetooth of my phone to the ES Presence node. And if I navigate to the settings of my phone and disable Bluetooth entirely, we'll see that the state of this sensor switches to not home. So we can use this sensor and its state to automate things in Home Assistant. All right, you've made it all the way to the end to the last bite. Thanks for sticking with me and congratulations. As a thank you, I'm going to show you a really cool trick how to combine Wi-Fi and Bluetooth for the ultimate in presence detection in your mobile smart home. I like to use the combo of both because I find that Bluetooth is really quick to register presence, while Wi-Fi is really good at extending our range. When we're outside roaming around the van, our phones stay connected to the Wi-Fi network thanks to the antenna on the roof that's connected to our Peplink router. While Bluetooth sometimes struggles inside the metal van connecting to this little device buried in our bench. Using both of these together has made our presence detection really solid. So let me show you how. I'm going to go back to Studio Code Server and look at our presence.yaml file again. And if I scroll down this binary sensor, this is the sensor we set up in my previous video, which you can take a look at right here. And that's all about using Wi-Fi for presence detection. So you can see in this code here that I'm looking for the term microphone amongst a list of Wi-Fi clients that I'm pulling from our Peplink router. And at the end here, I basically say, if that search term is matched in the list of Wi-Fi clients, we'll set this binary sensor to on and else we'll set it to off. But if I add this snippet right here, I'm modifying this binary sensor to look through the list of Wi-Fi clients on our Peplink router for this search term, or to check the state of the sensor that we defined below from our ES presence and see which room this device is in. So if sensor.microphone Bluetooth is in room van, then we can also turn this sensor on, else we'll just turn it off. So basically we're using the best of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth presence detection. And of course, you could expand this template out with more OR statements to include more sensors if you have more people or however you want to create this. But basically we have a binary sensor now that combines Wi-Fi and Bluetooth presence detection. All right, I'm gonna go over to our dashboard so we can look at how this works in practice. At the top, you see we have an anybody home sensor and the state is detected. Across from that, we can see the number of Peplink Wi-Fi clients currently on the network, and you can see that my phone is amongst them. And you can see the two sensors that we were just talking about over in Studio Code Server. Microphone Bluetooth is in the room van, and Microphone Wi-Fi is home. So if I go to the settings menu in my device and turn off Wi-Fi, you'll see that the Microphone Wi-Fi sensor eventually changes to away, but anybody home still says detected because the Microphone Bluetooth is still in the van. If I switch over to Bluetooth, and disable Bluetooth entirely. In a couple of seconds, the microphone Bluetooth sensor will say not home and our anybody home will switch to clear. And if I go back to Wi-Fi and turn it back on, 
you'll see that my device reconnects to the Wi-Fi and is detected as home, and so therefore anybody home is now detected. So you can see how this is combining Bluetooth and Wi-Fi into one binary sensor to detect if anybody's home. And that's how you can have rock solid presence detection using Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combined. Click subscribe, and until next time, safe travels.